Okay, so last weekend we finished up rough boring the block here for the 383 build. It's Monday morning. The parts have all shown up, right? Right. Except it's not Monday. Except it's not Monday morning. It's now Thursday afternoon. Thursday <laughs> afternoon we finally, I guess technically Wednesday we got parts, but... I didn't know where you was going with that one at first. <laughs> Just well, uh, this is our lineup here of most of the parts that we're going to need to do this engine. I'm sure there'll be some other things that we have forgotten that we'll have to pick up along the way. But we have our heads, our rods, crankshaft, balancer, bearings, lifters, camshaft, rockers, bolts that we're going to replace. Just a little bit of everything here getting going. Flywheel. We're still waiting. We want to send this block out and get the line hone done on it. And we have an appointment with uh, one of our competitors, who's not really a competitor. We work together. Uh, but anyway, he does line honing, so we've got an appointment with him to get the block done. But in the meantime, we want to try to do as much as we can. So as you saw before, we rough board the block, and we want to test fit the crankshaft and the connecting rods in there and do whatever clearancing we need to do. We're just trying to move along anywhere we can as fast as we can. Obviously, the new pistons won't go in the block right now because we haven't honed it. So I took one of the old pistons that came out of this engine. Um, I had to make a little more clearance on the skirt here. I hope I've got enough to where it'll clear the crankshaft when it's in there. And all that is is a placeholder to hold the connecting rod in the center of the cylinder when we roll this around so we can figure out where it needs clearance uh, inside the block here for the longer stroke okay. and heavier connecting rods. So we've got front and rear main bearings in. A little bit of assembly lube on there. So this is a scat crank for a 383. One piece rear main seal. Internally balanced on the front, externally balanced on the rear, so it does have to have a weighted flywheel. We've got uh, crank in, crank turns, this is just water spots on here. Uh, before we do the final assembly, we will polish this. In fact, we need to take some close measurements on it beforehand. But for right now, all we're after is the clearancing on it. Looking inside this block, I don't think there are any, I'm not seeing any issues between the counterweights and the block itself. So I guess we could put a piston in and see what happens. So you used the race lube over there, but over there we used the... Oh, did I use the wrong one? Well, that's the expensive stuff, but oh. that's okay. Yeah, it's already on my finger, so I guess that's what we have to use. This is why you don't hire a cleaning guy. <laughs> Always use the expensive stuff. They're supposed to clean, but they really kind of leave a mess everywhere. Just real quickly, a big thank you to everyone who has already ordered our special edition mouse pad from Epic Desk, but if you haven't, here's a quick rundown on this limited edition custom merch. We're collaborating with Epic Desk to bring you this custom mouse pad inspired by the four strokes of the internal combustion engine. Suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. This mouse pad measures 930 by 400 millimeters, or roughly 36 and a half by 15 and three quarter inches, and features real artwork, not AI artwork, inspired by yours truly. The size easily fits a keyboard with enough space for a mouse to glide smoothly across, and the print quality, stitch quality, and cushion of the pad are second to none. In fact, I think I'll be ordering a second one for myself so that I can keep one at my desk and use a second as a work mat for our MC1 measuring center. That way we can keep all of our extra tools, standards, and parts safe and protected while we're working on them. Each mat is a limited edition and ships with a certificate of authenticity. They'll be available for pre-order from now until August 13th, but once that window closes, they'll never be sold again. Check out the link in the description for more information, and don't miss out on this one-time run. Okay, let's see how this goes. So basically this whole kit is a kit that SCAT sells. So SCAT rod, SCAT crank, they actually sell it with the pistons that we're gonna use too. So it's an Icon dished piston that we're using. And Icon was nice enough to send those out to us for use in this build. So we'll touch more on those in later videos. Well, as we come around this direction here, we have loads of clearance. 
as we come on around here on this side, I don't know if you can see right down in there, that rod clips the bottom edge of the cylinder right there. If it wasn't for the fact that this doesn't have any other rod in here and it moves over, it wouldn't even turn. So we need to mark that area there. Evidently it's this right here. And we'll take that, open that up just a little bit more beyond what the factory has done. I have done these and back in the day when we uh, ground down 400 cranks to the 350 main journal size and used them and five, seven factory rods in them. Man, there was a lot of grinding you had to do to make that all clear. I'd say we're just gonna have a minimal amount to even do here. And you mentioning the old school way, we have another 350 block in there and you don't like my crazy ideas, but I think we should do a series on an old school 383 and do it like you're talking, do it the way you would have done it, it before to, they had all the off the shelf 383 yeah. kits. Cause I think it'd be fun to make the comparison between the two. Yeah. So maybe we'll do maybe that. We'll do on. that. <laughs> Let's get this one done first. See, it just kicks that over. Yeah. This little edge right here can kind of blend it in to what's already there from the factory. It's a lot easier to check twice and grind an extra time. Look at that. Did do good. Well, I don't know if my eye means anything or not, but I'd say you've got at least 60 thousandths there. It actually clips it right there. Yeah, so, got looking. Yeah, see there. if you can uh, get up in there then with a marker and make us a little mark there so we know where that is. Put the piston in the other cylinder and, and see what the other side's like. Yeah. We could while we got the crank in. Okay. So kind of just the same thing, opposite side from what we did on the other one. And then same thing here, if you want to take that same amount out in that area. You know, there were comments about, I want to see what it's, you know, how a professional does it. I don't know that we do it any different than Joe Schmo in his garage. It's just kind of a tedious process. Well, that's, that's what I was wondering if we uh, could get the first one right and then make a little pattern. We don't have any earplugs out here, do we? Huh? I need earplugs. What? Yeah. I kind of feel like we need to go a little further that way, but you come look at it. <clears throat> you know, we could roll this thing over. The ones to have to climb down there. Well, you don't even have main caps on. Here. Oh, how come we didn't put main caps on? I don't know. Why didn't you put main caps on? Because we was waiting to drop the crank. I'm going to say we need to go just a teeny bit back to the back of the block. Yeah. Yeah, you've got clearance, but that's about all. If you can put that back in on the other side here. That one you need to go south a little bit. Yeah. For those watching at home, you have to get your compass out and <laughs> you may have to recalibrate for which direction south is. South side of that one. You could probably stand just a little bit mostly on that south side. That's a hard spot to see. But again, I think you've got uh, probably more than enough there but I would, just like we was talking on that other one, 
I think you can go in from this direction right here and take a little bit off the bottom. Just check in everywhere. This is about si just shy of 60 thousandths, kind of using it as a feeler gauge. Right there, it's just barely, I don't know. I'm gonna say it has at least 60 thousandths clearance. There's just spots where it, you know, this is stiff enough that it doesn't yeah. go through. No, that all, that all looks real good there to me. It's not as pretty as I want it to be, but, <laughs> but plenty of clearance there. I mean, it's, it goes right past no matter. No matter where you're at there. So that's everything on, on that cylinder. So we may not be fully done with the first one, but we feel like we're close enough. We can kind of yeah, start seeing we should, where we need to go we here. We should be able to take some measurements off of it and transfer them to the next ones here. So kind of what I'm thinking is just use this up against the machine surface of the main maybe yeah that sounds like a plan and is that about right from my perspective yes okay so now put it in that one and let's see if i can make a mark there let's do the next one too this one is going to be the may got a little aggressive on that one okay They go back and forth between saying it looks like you have a wig <laughs> to say like, there was one video recently where they were complimenting your hair. Well, I'm also like, someone, they complimented my rug, how good it was. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's what they usually do. But there was one where they actually complimented your actual hair. I'm like, do you people love his hair or hate his hair? I'm having so much fun here. I've been waiting for you to say, ah, oh, don't you just love performance stuff? I've been keeping it to myself for the sake of our audience. <laughs> Stick to my tractors. You don't have to do this on your tractors unless you got a hot rod tractor and I don't, so. Right. Okay, who's gonna do it? I don't care. I can try one, but I'm probably gonna jack it up. Well, I went a lot of work to get this block for you, so. It's your customer, your buddies. My customers don't bring me stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, that's not even go into the stuff your customers been bringing. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a good point. <laughs> Did it break or did it just come out? Come out. barely yeah there's a certain spot there that you know that line where we did, yeah. did where I don't where I think we planned on grinding a little more that we didn't grind anymore yeah I think it's, that's probably it's it's right corner right there for yeah. the camera yeah so maybe on the first cylinder that's where we tried to go from from the bottom cylinder side so maybe that's what we do yeah we do some more of that Okay, first one I feel like. But it's the same spot. It's right on that corner. Let me see. Yeah. 
So same deal, just a teeny tiny bit right there. Yep. Right here. And we need to do the same exact thing on every yeah, single one, every which single one of them. tells me I was doing a good job at making them <laughs> consistent. Yeah. Makeshift feeler gauge tape I, measure. I was think our tape measure was uh, probably as good a way as any to figure out where we were at. Yep. That would clearance itself. Yes, it would. <laughs> it's just a matter of how long it and would run. As long as you run open headers, nobody would know. <laughs> you know, I put some gears in my old Vega one time, and they were so noisy that when I was down there at Vandermeer's racing, I would never coast down the uh, uh, staging area there. It's downhill. But I always started my engine, <laughs> even if I was coasting, because I was so embarrassed at my noisy gears. <laughs> uh, Alrighty. They never broke. So everywhere I put it, we have clearance. Yeah, plenty of clearance. I must say it's good. Yeah, I, I uh, the way that lays there, if you look just right, you can see clearance. between there and see there's more than adequate clearance. Okay, clearancing is done. That's the worst part of the whole job, I would say. Yes, yeah, this was, it's a little time consuming. Should have, should have got a dart block that's already <laughs> clearanced probably, but. The way we did that though, we started out with two cylinders there, spent a bunch of time getting them right, and then tried to duplicate the rest, rest of the way through. Worked yeah. out pretty well. I was gonna say, I think we actually did pretty good at duplicating yeah. it, because it came out as we went through the, the back six cylinders yeah. they were all uh needed weight removed in all the same or not weight removed <laughs> <laughs> material removed in all the same spots so i think we were pretty consistent it's just we needed to do a little bit more to get yeah. it perfect and honestly it it had clearance but a little yeah we, a little we was more. down to the point of fine-tuning it just a little bit so uh that being said from here we'll have the guy uh local shop do the line hone on the block yeah. with our ARP studs or bolts, whatever we go yeah, with. Yeah, whatever we end up with here, but we got to figure that out yet for sure. Balance the crank. Hopefully it's pretty close, but Yeah, well, we'll that's see. it. Hopefully the piston should be, pistons and rods should be close enough that you would don't, don't have to do anything to them yeah. other than figure out the bob weights. We'll go through the heads, check out the heads, make sure that they Make sure the seats are good, make sure the valves are good, and make sure that the springs are set up correct for our camshaft. Right. Polish the crank, finish home the block and deck the block, zero deck the block, kind of decide on our final compression ratio. Everybody's kind of roasting us for saying we were gonna go closer to nine to one, but. Well, I would sooner this thing would run on pump gas and never ever have any detonation problem than to trust a customer to always put premium fuel in. Because that's the thing, he's gonna have way more power than he needs anyway. I think this is gonna be way more motor than he was expecting, or at least I hope it is. Well, he was expecting it. I mean, he's going from a 327 that the cylinders had a worse surface finish than right. this does right now, just board. Just rough board. So if he was happy with that, this will knock really his socks off. This. Yeah. So, yeah, so, and I did communicate with him that he needs to bring us uh, uh, his distributor and carburetor and everything like that so we can put this thing completely together and make it run. Yep, so that's what's coming up in the next couple of videos. Keep moving forward. Hopefully it'll come together pretty quick, but 
it, when you're yeah, working these, on other people's timelines and waiting on parts and well that's it when this isn't the only thing in the shop uh we have to still keep other jobs going why you do what you can and and in a job like this there's always something you're waiting on mm-hmm all righty okay i'm ready for supper <laughs> me too <laughs>